Hello everyone, in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my personal top 10 hardware priorities for computer music producers, which I assume is most people watching this channel. So if you primarily are working on a mixing console or you're primarily working with analog hardware and analog gear, this isn't as relevant to you because your priorities are going to be different. I apologize in advance, my head's gonna constantly be turning like that because uh, I have the slides on my computer and I don't really have a great setup for my camera. Um, at some point I might buy a webcam, but I really don't think I'm gonna do too many videos like this. Now, I think it's a good idea for pretty much everybody to every year or two kind of take stock of their setup, of their progress, you know, things you feel like you've done really well creatively, areas where you think you need improvement. And for me, I just wish that I had somebody who had kind of laid out their priorities um, when I was first getting started, because I would have thought about things very differently. I'm guessing only five or 10 people are gonna watch this anyway, but I'm hoping for some of you, if you're early on in your journey, or even if you're five or six years in, but you just feel like your output is just not where you want it to be, um, I'd recommend that you take stock of what you consider your priorities to be. It may not be the same order as mine, and you may not grade yourself the same way that I graded myself. And just keep in mind that when I go through this as an example, with the grades that I'm giving, um, those are not based on budget. It's based on probably what I could have done. So in theory, I could have given myself an A for everything if I had made some different choices um, not even related to budget, because obviously that's a that's a big factor and that's not something that's always in your control. And yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it so we don't waste too much time. For me, the number one priority is of course going to be your computer. Um, I've talked about it previously. My computer that I'm now using for production is not very friendly. There's a lot of issues that I don't think are totally my fault. I think there's just some issues with the computer itself, DPC latency and whatnot. Um, so luckily I still do have a Mac that I can use, an iMac if I absolutely have to. Its specs are way, way lower um, than the computer I currently have, but it does allow me to work with like 50, 60 tracks without issue. Whereas with this one, once I start getting my track count up to 40 or 50, it's a big problem. In theory, it should have been an A, but I just didn't do enough research clearly. So that's on me. So I give myself a C for that. Number two, this is maybe a weird one for people, but the actual room that you're working in, the physical space, that's very important for a couple reasons. Number one is the acoustics of the room. That really does matter. Um, where I currently work, there are some obvious resonances and it's like right around C1. And that's a problem because that's a very common note. So um, that's mainly the reason why I give myself a C here, but I don't really have complete control over where I'm working. It kind of is the only space that I could use. And I think I've made as best of it as I could. There's things I could do, especially when it comes to comfort that could be enhanced. And that's the second part of your room and your space. Because you're spending so much time um, at the computer, at that room, you wanna make sure that it's comfortable. You wanna make sure that it's a place that inspires you. Lighting, carpet, temperature, um, maybe posters, you know, you just want the room to be a place that you enjoy being in. Where I am currently, it's kind of iffy. So I kind of laid out exactly what the room is that I'm working in. And there are some things that could definitely be improved, but at the same time, I'm kind of stuck with what I have because I'm not sure how much longer I'll be here for. Um, third priority is for me, the audio interface, making sure that your audio interface makes sense for your situation. So I'm using, uh, currently on this setup, I have a UAD Apollo Twin Mark II Duo with the Thunderbolt adapter. I don't really use UAD plugins, but based on what I needed interface wise, to me, it probably made the most sense. Um, if I was still on the Mac, I'd probably be using uh, Apogee, but I just figured I could get this one for a little bit cheaper. Um, unfortunately, I did need to get a Thunderbolt adapter. So from Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3, and you know, three weeks after I bought the interface, which I did get like B-stock refurbished, so I got it for very cheap and no tax, um, they did release a Apollo Twin X, which would just plug right into my computer. But all in all, I'm not upset with the purchase. I think it's it's what I need, and it so far is working and it's holding up. So I have no complaints um, as far as that goes. So I give myself a B plus for audio interface. You might even need to dock yourself grades if you have something that's way more than what you need. You know, I don't need an 18 by 20 input output interface. I just don't need it. So for me, this is perfect. 
and um, the price was right. I could have spent more money if I wanted to, but uh, thus far, I think it, it's made the most sense for me. Number four, the desk. Okay, sometimes this is out of your control because you can't afford a big old desk and you're just kind of stuck with what you have. However, I think the desk is very important depending on your workflow, depending on the MIDI devices you're using. How does it hold your mouse and keyboard? How does it hold your speakers? How does it hold your monitor? It seems silly, but it's actually very important. And I bought, I think I actually bought something like off Musician's Friend like 10 years ago that was like a, a music producer desk and it has rack space and it can be wheeled around and it's very long. Um, I modified it a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with it. The reason I give myself a B minus and it's just a flaw of the desk, which I probably should have researched or thought about more, is that the um, space for the pullout drawer, there's a pullout drawer, hopefully you can hear me banging that, um, is not, it's not quite wide enough where I can't really hide a MIDI keyboard underneath it. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. So I might be able to alter this grade. But for me, I'm happy with the desk that I have. I've seen people setups where like they have desks available and then they end up like putting their stuff really strangely. So for me, the desk is pretty important. Um, it's something that I do think about and constantly want to upgrade if, if I could. But for me, I give myself a B minus because it's, it's served the task for years and I really don't have too many complaints. Number five, your actual speakers and headphones, so your playback device. I give myself an A, not because I have the best thing that money can buy and I could buy better speakers, but it works really well for my space. It works well for my situation. So I have a, a pair of Rocket 5s, which I don't need anything bigger than that for the room I'm in, and then I have a subwoofer. So I actually have gotten it where, you know, I have the all the drivers kind of working efficiently. So it works very well for me. I know that these are not the greatest quality speakers in the world, but they do what I want them to do. Headphones wise, I use Sennheiser HD650 and I do have an Apogee Groove, which when I'm working on the Mac, I can use and plug in and it, it works really well with the core audio. Um, on the PC, I can't really use the Groove. It just doesn't, it doesn't really... It makes things even worse in terms of the, the real-time playback. But I'm giving myself an A for that because I think that I made the best choices for my budget. Okay, number six is the chair. It's what I'm sitting in right now. Um, it's fine. It, it's kind of broken. Like it, As time goes on, I start sinking in the chair. So every hour or so, I have to lift myself back up. Um, but for what I paid, I'm, I'm pretty much happy with it. The one thing I would probably do differently if I was to get another chair is I would consider where the armrests are because these armrests are uh, a little bit cumbersome at times. So I would probably wanna get something where the armrests sit back a little bit further so I can wheel myself closer without banging in. But all in all, I give myself a B minus. I've been able to sit in this chair for days at a time without really too much pain. Sometimes I get neck pain because I'm leaning forward, but that's on me. Uh, moving forward to number seven priority, highest priority for me would be the monitor. Um, I have an HP Pavilion 27 XW. For me, it's an A for a variety of reasons. It's the perfect kind of size for me to place my monitors, and I kind of know that I'm in the right field. Um, I give myself an A for that. It wasn't too expensive. I don't need 4K. I don't need anything that fancy. This one really does the trick, and, and I've been very happy with that um, for, for my personal setup. I don't have a dual monitor. But I don't think it's necessary. Uh, this works for me. Number eight, your mouse and your keyboard. So what are you pairing with your monitor? Um, I have a couple different things. I have a Kensington Expert trackball as well as a uh, Logitech T6330. It's kind of like a magic mouse, but smaller. I know they have a newer one out there. That's like 200 bucks. If you can, if you're looking for a mouse that's pretty efficient, like this is definitely a good one. Um, it takes a little while to get used to the small size. Uh, for people that are more into to mixing or your space is really limited, the trackball is definitely a good option to have. And then keyboard-wise, I have a Logitech K800. And also, um, I'll grab the other one because I just have it nearby. The uh, Logitech K400R. It's not a really great keyboard for like word processing, but for music production, it's pretty good because it's so small. And I really just need it for key commands and to rename tracks. And the other one that I use for my actual like word processing and you know day to day life and job stuff, um, it's really good. I really like the way the keys work. It's just a little bit big for music production. It takes up a lot of space, so that's the reason why I give myself an A minus. I wish that there was something like the K eight hundred that just came in a little bit of a sleeker, smaller package, and there probably is. I just haven't found it. Number nine. 
for me, these are very low priority items. And this is where we're kind of getting to the crux of the video and why I'm making it is that when you watch things online or you know you see all the advertising and the marketing, these are the things that get pushed as maybe your number one or two priority. When in reality, if your workflow doesn't accommodate it or your space doesn't accommodate it, and you find that you're just using the mouse and keyboard most of the time, MIDI keyboards and controllers are not that important. Um, and the reason I give myself a C here is uh, it's average. Like I don't really think that I use them to the best of their ability, but I'm also mostly a mouse and keyboard kind of person. So um, right now I'm using a Novation base station for my MIDI keyboard and MIDI uh, for, for playing parts in, and that's honestly pretty stupid. Um, I'm gonna try to switch it over to a Nectar SE49 because it's thinner and I'm hoping it will fit in my pullout tray and just be more efficient for me. Um, this one's so bulky. The key action is actually pretty good, and there is aftertouch, but it's, it's more than what I need personally, and I don't really use the, the synthesizer part of it, just being honest. Um, I also have an Akai LPD-8, which is sitting right here. I just use it for knobs and buttons. I don't actually use the uh, pads to play stuff in. And then I also do have an Akai APC-40, that to be honest, I need to spend a few weeks just trying to use that with Bitwig and just see if I can come up with a workflow that's that's fun. So right now I'm not really using it to the best of its ability. Um, but yeah, I don't think many keyboards and controllers are that important. Maybe the keyboard you have is important, but um, unless it's a major part of how you produce your music, it's just kind of a pass for me. And I, I see videos and people with like these crazy MIDI collections and it's just like, how much are you really using that stuff on the day to day? Um, and then last but not least would be for computer music producers, hardware synths and analog gear. Um, I actually do have a couple of EQs lying around. I have a few preamps lying around. I have a couple synthesizers, but currently I'm not incorporating any of them into my day to day. And in fact, I haven't used them in a long time. Occasionally I'll use the base station to make a base patch, but that's, that's really about it. So for me, it's not really an applicable grade, but I'm okay with that because it's such a low priority for me personally. And that's kind of just where I want this video to end is I'd love for people, especially, you know, every couple of years, you might want to take inventory of this and, and grade yourself on your top 10 priorities. And to me, these are kind of the 10 things, how you list them is up to you, how you grade yourself is really up to you. But for the most part, I think overall, I'm probably averaging a B minus to a B, which is okay. I could have done some things better. I could have made other choices. Um, which in hindsight I will, but this is, you know, I'm, I'm still at like a B minus after like at this point, what, 12 years into doing this. So, so yeah, I still have room to improve. We all can, can get better and make better choices along the way where budget is not really part of our, our factoring and of our grading because we're all in different situations. Um, and you might have a lot of grades that are NA because maybe all you have is your laptop and headphones. Right? Maybe that's your situation and that's totally fine. Um, you can still think about where you're mostly making your music. Are you doing it on your bed? Is, is, that, is that working out well for you? Would it be better to put it on a desk? You know, questions and, and things like that. And I'll just leave with one short anecdote because it's a useful story. Um, when I was still learning to do a lot of this music production stuff, I remember somebody asked a question to the instructor and they said, okay, I've got 300 bucks, what should I buy? That's a very popular question, you see that a lot. And the instructor asked the person, they said, okay, well, how are you, how, how's your current setup, right? How are you making your music? What kind of a chair do you have? What kind of a desk are you using? And with that line of questioning, the individual revealed that, oh, I'm just like using a folding chair, you know, and definitely not a very comfortable room based on what we were hearing. And, you know, the guy was saying, yeah, I'm struggling like producing music. I'm struggling finding the motivation and, and all this stuff. And, and the instructor just said, look, take that $300 and like invest in a good chair you know, maybe invest in a couple of like lava lamps, you know, something to just try to make your environment more creatively fulfilling for you. And I'm not trying to be like pretentious and a jerk, like saying it that way, because I know a lot of people are going to watch and go, oh my God, just shut up already. But in all the years, I've always looked back on that and have thought about it and have said, yeah, you know, he was dead on with that piece of advice because it's true. If you're struggling with output, it's probably not your hardware gear. It's probably not the MIDI keyboard. You know, it's probably not your mouse and keyboard, honestly. It's it's probably not your monitor, but it could be things like your chair. 
It could be things like your desk. It could be things like your room and your space, right? And those are things that a lot of times you can change and you can you can mix up until you find what really is most comfortable and well-suited for you. So for the few of you who watch this video, especially those of you struggling with output and motivation, and you're probably struggling with output and motivation if you're watching this video, I'm struggling with output and motivation because I'm making the video, right? Um, and at this point, I'm not, you know, at this point, I'm not really doing a whole lot of music production stuff, to be honest with you guys. A few years ago, I was way, way into it. And now I'm kind of, I'm even personally on the the decline. Um, and that's just being, that's full transparency and honesty. Like, I'm not sure what videos to make moving forward um, because other people are just putting out phenomenal content all the time that I'm not going to be able to touch. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. And hopefully this has been useful for you. I do think it's a, it's a worthwhile exercise. And, and sometimes we get so caught up in the software and we get so caught up in the things you know, the, the, the toys, if you will, that we forget that ultimately it's, it's the motivation, it's the work ethic, it's what's getting you to, to want to sit down and produce. Those are the things that I think matter sometimes a lot more than we, than we might initially think. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I'll be back with another video next week. Take care.